Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sapna Dudwal. I'm working as a professor in the Department of Management at St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. This is lecture 11 of unit 3 of organizational behavior. This subject is taught in BBA second semester. The topic I'm going to cover in this lecture are, are conflict. I'm going to discuss definition of conflict. We are, I'm going to discuss different views on conflict. Then we'll be discussing types of conflict, levels of conflict, conflict resolution techniques, then sources of conflict. So I'm starting with the definition of conflict. So organizational conflict, or otherwise known as workplace conflict, is described as the state of disagreement or misunderstanding resulting from the actual or perceived di descent of needs, belief, resources and relationships between the members of the organization. At the workplace, whenever two or more persons interact, conflict occurs when opinion with respect to any task or decisions are in contradictions. So, this is very clear from things. The word conflict is or we can say conflict can be defined as expression of hostility, negative attitude, aggression and misunderstanding. So conflict may emerge between different organizations or within organization and the social political environment. So it is a, it is a disagreement between people. Now characteristics of conflict first is conflict is a process so conflict occurs in layers first layer is always misunderstanding the other layers are difference of value difference of view viewpoint difference of interest and interpersonal differences it is also called a process because it begins with one party perceiving the other or to oppose or negatively affect its interest and ends with competing, collaborating, compromising or avoiding. Second character is conflict is inevitable. Conflict exists everywhere. No two persons are same. Hence, they may have individual differences. And the differences may be because of values or otherwise lead to conflict. Although inevitable, conflict can be minimized, diverted and resolved. Now third one is conflict is a normal part of life. Individual groups, organizations have unlimited needs and different values but limited resources. So thus this incompatibility is bound to lead to conflict. Now fourth is perception. It must be perceived by the parties to it otherwise it doesn't exist. So in interpersonal interaction perception is more important than reality. So what we perceive and think affects our behavior, attitude and communication. So, conflict arises from the perception also. Conflict, then opposition. One party to the conflict must be perceiving or doing something the other party doesn't like or want. Then, interdependence and interaction. There must be some kind of real or perceived interdependence. Without interdependence, there can be no interaction. Conflict occurs only when some kind of inter interaction take place. Then next character, everyone, next characteristic is everyone is inflicted with conflict. And it may occur within an individual, between two or more individual groups or between organizers. Then conflict is not undimensional. It comes into different ways in accordance with degree of seriousness and capacity. So it at times it may improve even a difficult situation. Now the next topic views on conflict. There are three views on conflict. I'll start with the traditional views of organizational conflict. So the traditional view on organizational conflict is the earliest of the trial. It was first developed in the late 1930s and early 1940s with the most linear and simple approach towards conflict. According to the tradi traditional view, any conflict in the organization is outright bad and harmful. Although conflicts are of different types and traditional views only sees conflict as 
dysfunctional and destructive suggests that organizational conflicts must be avoided and identified and malfunctioning callous so moreover the traditional view of organizational conflict identifies poor communication disagreement lack of openness and trust among individuals and the failure of managers to be responsive to their employees needs is the main causes of organizational conflict so the traditional view is the early approach to conflict which assumed that all conflict was bad and to be avoided the conflict was treated negatively and discussed with such terms as violence destruction and irrationality to reinforce its negative implication the conflict conflict was dysfunctional outcome resulting from poor communication lack of transparency and trust between people and the failure of manager to be responsive to the necessities and aspiration of their employees this was traditional view on conflict now the second view is human relation view of conflict of organizational conflict from late 1940s to mid 70s the human relation view dominated the topic of organizational conflict in that period the field of management and organizational behavior were expanding the traditional view was challenged by various studies and surveys and therefore the human relation view on organization organizational conflict presented a significantly different perspective on the topic the human relation view on organizational conflict primarily teaches us to accept conflict it identify conflict as an important aspect of any organization which simply cannot be more important unlike the traditional view the human relation view does not discard conflict as outright negative and destructive thing instead human relation view says that an organizational conflict may be beneficial for the individuals groups and the organization in general moreover this perspective suggests that organizational conflict within groups may even lead to better group performance and outcome so the human relation view of conflict treat conflict as a natural an inevitable phenomenon so can't be eliminated by any organization hence the conflict was seen in a positive light light as it was suggested that conflict may lead to an improvement in group performance but it is similar to the interaction interactionist view of the conflict now comes the third view that is interactionic view of organizational conflict So with the passing time the further studies in the field of organizational behavior people started to accept conflict as an integral and somewhat positive aspect so interactionist view on organizational conflict extend this concept while the human relation view accept organizational conflict as an important part where the interactionist view on organizational conflict conflicts take the same aspect one step further it suggests that ongoing minimal level of conflict is necessary and beneficial for the group in the interactionist view an organization or a group with no conflict is more likely to become static non responsible inflexible and inadaptable so it states that a minimum level of conflict is beneficial for the group because it maintains a certain level of creativity self evaluation and competition among the individuals so all these things result in increased group performance more creative solutions to the problem and better outcomes so it clearly stated that only the functional and constructive form of conflict conflict help the group while dysfunctional or destructive form of conflict should be avoided now the next topic that is factors influencing conflict the first factor which influences the conflict is unclear responsibility if there is lack of clarity regarding who is responsible for which section of the task or project conflict take place and to avoid the situation the roles and responsibilities of the team members should be stated clearly and also agreed upon by all now second factor is interpersonal relationship every member of an organization possesses different personality which plays a crucial role in resolving conflict in an organization conflict at the workplace are often caused by interpersonal issues between the members of the organization 
Now the third factor is scarcity of resources. One of the main reason of our occurrence of conflicts in an organization is the inadequacy of resources like time, money, material, etc., due to which members of the organization compete with each other, leading leading to conflict between them. The next factor which influences the conflict is conflict of interest when there is a disorientation between the personal goals of the individuals and goals of the organization conflict of interest arises as the individual may fight for his personal goals which hinders the overall success of the project then conflict elevates at the workplace due to individual and inter individual factors individual related causes entail attitude belief personality orientation etc these are the inter individual conflict arises when manager breaches the norms of the organization so these are the factor which influences the say, now causes or sources of conflict conflict may caused by any of more of the following first is cognitive dissonance your difference of opinion it is conflict between diverse thinking then it may occur because of status status is a state condition or situation when there is need for status a wrong person is promoted then it may occur because of incur incongruence a party is required to engage in activity that is incongruent with his or her needs of interest then in incompatibility it may arises because of in incompatibility of uh, values skill goals and perception of uh, employees it may arise because of stress then it may uh, then conflict may arise because of poor or inadequate organizational structure or lack of teamwork then it may arise because of the people they want power struggle for power uh, which leads to uh, conflict then because of leadership ya poor leadership sometimes conflict to arise because of weak leadership in the organization now conflict management styles how can management or how conflict can be managed properly first one is or first one is conflict or we can say conflict resolution techniques first technique is avoidance it is a non assertive and non cooperative technique the manager may think or pretend that no conflict exists or just ignore it this strategy is used when the effort to resolve is not worth the salt but this approach over the time worsens the situation so avoidance may take place the form of diplomatic side stepping the issue or postponing the resolution in time to come or simply withdrawing from a situation the second technique is accommodating accommodating is a non assertive and cooperative just opposite of competing to solve the conflicts if someone puts his interest last so as to satisfy concerns of other people by giving in or sacrificing or accepting it is called as accommodation so however being too accommodating too often can weaken your position to the point where your voice is never heard so accommodation accommodating is the second second technique then third is competing this this style is assertive and non cooperative a person put his or her interest before anyone else's interest it is also known as dominating style one stands up for his rights and uses all the power to win his position this is low relationship orientation manager using this style want others to follow and dictate or get their way this style can be used only when one has established itself as a leader he is one has to be a strong leader then fourth is compromising so compromising is actually mini mini win or mini lose style it is some assertive and some cooperative style compromises of on the path toward collaboration somewhere between competition and accommodation the style means mutual give and take to the satisfy both the parties 
और बोथ में से समथिंग इज बेटर देन नथिंग देन फिफ्थ इज कोलैबोरेटिंग कोलैबोरेटिंग इज विन विन इट इज असर्टिव एज वेल एज कोऑपरेटिव जस्ट अपोजिट ऑफ अवॉइडिंग इट मे ऑल्सो बी कॉल्ड एज इंटीग्रेटिव स्टाइल दिस स्टाइल फोकस ऑन सेटिस्फाइंग दी अंडरलाइन कंसर्न ऑफ बोथ द पार्टीज मीटिंग मैनी करेंट नीड्स by working together though this style employs double ownership commitment sometimes this style gives birth to new mutual deeds now types of conflicts next topic is first is intrapersonal conflict intrapersonal conflict take place within an individual the person experience it is experience his own mind it is a type of conflict that is psychological involving the individual's thoughts values principles and emotions so intrapersonal conflict may come in different forms from the simple mundane one like deciding whether or not to go vegan for lunch to one that can affect major decisions such as choosing a career path second is intra group conflict intra group conflict occurs among individuals within a team the compact incompatibilities and misunderstanding between team members leads to intra group conflict it starts from interpersonal disagreement like team members having different personalities which may lead to tension or differences in the views and ideas then intrapersonal conflict first was intrapersonal conflict second was intra group then is intra intra conflict means a conflict between two individual individuals basically this occurs be because of some difference in people we have varied personality which usually lead to incompatible choices and opinion so it is natural occurrence which can eventually help in personal growth and developing our relationship with others then intergroup intergroup conflict occurs when a misunderstanding arises among different teams within an organization for example the marketing department of an organization can come in conflict with the customer support department this is because of the varied set of goals and interest of these different groups or different departments now these are the questions which are related to the above topic if any query is there please do contact me any confusion is there please do contact me thank you Thank you so much.